Hey there, Capricorn. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. We are be going to be, we are going to be getting into the energies and reading for you for February, Capricorn. Keep in mind though, we are going to split this into two sections. The first section is going to speak to Capricorn rising. And with that, I will be using the astrological chart, but please understand that when I refer to the astrology, I am using true sidereal astrology, not tropical, or in other words, not mainstream astrology. Yes. Uh, so keep that in mind. Yeah. For the first half of the reading, we're going to be speaking directly to Capricorn rising. Now that could resonate. The message from that part of the reading could resonate for a Capricorn sun or moon, but just keep in mind that when I'm speaking to the actual placement within the chart, that is really only going to be relevant for Capricorn rising because your rising sign is what sets the tone of your chart, what places, which signs in which houses and which planets in which houses. Yes. Then we're going to move into the second half of the reading where we're going to get a big old energetic pull for the sign of Capricorn, right? So the second half of this reading is non-denominational. I totally forgot to turn the music back on. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So uh, the second half of the reading is non-denominational, right? So whichever whichever practice of sidereal or i'm sorry whichever practice of astrology you resonate with the most it doesn't matter we're just going to be pulling some cards for the collective sign of capricorn sun moon rising venus jupiter whatever placements you have there whatever you're curious about also the cross watcher might get the most value out of that if you are a cross watcher yeah so keep that in mind. I did put timestamps in the description box below and the pinned comment below. So if you want to skip the first half and go straight to the second half, you are able to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's just get into this, you guys. Yes. Hi, Capricorn. All right. Capricorn rising. Welcome to February. So, uh, big spiritual energies for you this month. And the, the, the thing that I was getting about it as I was looking through the chart and just kind of channeling the message for you and looking what's going on in terms of that big spiritual energies, some of you may kind of be struggling with that because first of all, well, let me get into the chart and I'll show you why. So here you have the chart for Capricorn rising for the month of February of 2022. And as you can see here, Capricorn, you have a shit ton of energy in your 12th house, right? So for you right now, it, I mean, the energy is split between your 12th house and your first house, okay? But the bulk, the majority of what's actually <clears throat> happening or the majority of the action is happening in your 12th house. And that's where I'm getting this big spiritual energy from, okay? so. Like I said, many of you might be struggling with this. The 12th house is considered by or is said by some astrologers. Traditionally, the 12th house is considered the house of God. OK, um, and the 12th house is also the house of the ultimate collective. It's the house of spirituality. It is ruled by Pisces, which is a water sign. Pisces is a very, very deep sign. The 12th house is a very, very deep house. Uh, and because you're an earth sign, right there is where I'm getting a lot of this friction or a lot of this resistance or a lot of this reluctance to kind of dive deep into the waters. Now, the earth and the water go well together, right? They are a divine match. They are a perfect match. Without the earth, there would be nothing for, there would be no solid ground for anything to grow from, anything to live on, anything to feed off of, right? But then also without water, there would be nothing to help. Well, not that there would be nothing, but also water is necessary for all life forms on this planet, right? But the thing about that is for you, Capricorn, what I'm feeling is like, yeah, okay, you know, you're you're cool with water, I guess, you know, you can you can get your feet wet, you know. The problem when it comes into the twelfth house is you can get easily you could drown easily. And I think figuratively speaking, that's where a heavy amount of resistance comes from because the twelfth house is very, very deep. It's the house of the collective. It's ruled by Pisces and Neptune. Um, and you know, there is a there is a very real danger of kind of getting lost in the sauce, losing your sense of self while you're in the collective or while you're swimming in the collective waters. And that losing of your sense of self could also indicate drowning, right? 
And I think that's heavily what you might be afraid of here, or that's kind of the feeling where this resistance is coming from. But that's not actually what's really happening for you right now. I feel like what's happening for you, Capricorn, is that either you are going through a pretty strong spiritual renaissance, a uh, spiritual re uh, realignment, and... <laughs> Even as I was channeling this, I was getting the feeling that some of you don't even want to hear about spirit. You're not even like, like all for some of you, this is like, I'm getting all woo woo on you here. And I'm, I'm not here to talk about that, blah, blah, blah. But see, that's just kind of an effect of the resistance. Um, and what I was saying to you last month is that, you know, oh, this transformation that's happening for you is kind of putting you in a, in a position to understand that there's more to life and existence than just the physicality of it. The title for your reading last month was there's more to life than just physical transactions. And so now moving into February, as things continue to pro progress and you know, you have all of this energy happening within the 12th house for you, which is the house of spirit, spirit spirituality, the collective and God, you're kind of getting this deep sense of awareness or understanding of like the collective or the people around you. I feel like you're kind of being thrown into the deep end of the pool in order to get you to start opening up to the, the deeper truths of reality. So for some of you, this is either you actually forming a new connection with God, with spirituality, with religion, maybe. Um, I do feel like if this is in that case for you, I feel like some of you actually might be releasing yourself from certain footholds that religion has had on you. I'm hearing specifically dogma. And some of you actually, and maybe why this is such a topic of contention for you, and maybe why you really hunkered down and just focused on the material, the tangible, what it is you have in front of you, the transactions, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I feel like that for some of you may come from or may stem from either past lives past life experiences or current life experiences that have happened in the past that have really hurt you. And I feel like that may have come a lot from religion and religious dogma and all that. I'm not here to bash religion. I personally am not a religious person. I'm very much more spiritual. I do believe, however, that religion is an excellent stepping stone for humanity to get us in alignment to what the potential could be when we step out of the realm of religion and step into the truth of spirituality, okay? So a lot of this resistance may come from past circumstances, whether that's past life or current life, that have really damaged you when it comes to your relationship to spirit, to God, source, creator, and all that kind of stuff. But I do feel like you have the opportunity, even the potential to heal that and to form your own opinion of what, of who or what God, source, creator is, okay? Some of you may even actually be feeling like you are getting to know God. You're getting to know God on a personal level not how anyone else describes him, him or her for you, not how anyone else says they should be, but who you understand them to be. And as I said that, these two cards have come out here. So let me switch this up so you can see better. But you have the sun with the three of cups. Now the three of cups uh, does have a twofold meaning here. The three of cups can represent the community dogma, the hive mind mentality, going, going with the flow of things just because that's what the collective does, that's what society does, so you're just going to go with it. For some of you, you are gaining clarity about that. So again, let, I'll take you back to the energies of being damaged and hurt severely in some cases. Some of you in past lives may have actually lost your life to this spiritual dogma. I do kind of want to say, not spiritual, excuse me, this religious dogma, maybe this I, what I heard was spiritual bullshit. And so that may be, you know, how you have been describing it. Um, so I do feel like with the three of cups here and the sun, you are starting to realize the truth behind that. Now, the second meaning of the three of cups is actually the three of cups can represent God, source creator. It could also re represent the father, the son, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity, mother, father, and son, masculine, feminine, and inner child, okay? So with this coming out with the sun here, I definitely feel like there's clarity coming to you in terms of spirituality. Okay, then you do have the Empress at the bottom of the deck. Many of you are starting to get an understanding of the fact that God, source, creator, or the universe, or spirituality, 
or anything like that is actually more unconditionally loving than you had expected, than you had even realized, or maybe in the past than you were willing to accept. And that's where we get into another part of the 12th house. Because the 12th house, like I said, it represents God's source creator. It's the house of God. It's the house of spirituality. It's a house of the house of the collective. The 12th house is also ruled by Pisces. And Pisces is an energy of perfection, just like its exact opposite in the zodiac, which is Virgo. But the difference between the perfectionism of, we'll say, the 12th house and spirituality and Pisces versus the perfectionism of the 6th house and Virgo, which is another earth sign, by the way, maybe even religion, is the fact that Virgo works to, works to achieve physical perfection. And that can be good and beneficial, but it also can be very detrimental because you can get yourself into some situations where you are reaching for ideals or goals that are just not attainable for some sort of idealistic or dogmatic reasons. Virgo can be very dogmatic sometimes, okay? Um, I'm getting energies, I'm hearing things of like going with the, uh, not going with the flow, but like instead of being a leader, being a follower, which isn't necessarily bad. I'm not trying to bash Virgo here. But on the other side, on the flip side, you have the exact opposite of Pisces and the house, the 12th house. And the perfectionism here comes in the form of understanding divine alignment and understanding that you as a soul, as an individual that God source creator created to be, you are perfect just as you are. Nothing really needs to change at the core of your soul. Obviously, we are here in this physical reality and we're going through these lessons that help us attain a higher level of personal spiritual perfection. But really, at the core of you, the being that you are intrinsically is perfect in the eyes of God's source creator. Nothing needs to change there. And that's where the energy of the Empress comes in, which is at the bottom of the deck for you right now. This is where the unconditionally loving energy comes from. You don't have to change yourself to be associated with me, says God. You don't have to be anything different than the person that I made you to be. No matter what and regardless as to what any of the other physical beings around you may have to say about it. Your connection with me, says God, is divine. And you have a right to that connection. And nobody can define that connection for you. That connection is yours. And that's where we're getting into the alignment of you starting to understand your connection with spirit, your connection with God's source creator outside of what physical representation says for it to be. And the Empress represents that unconditionally loving energy because the Empress loves all just as they are and nurtures them just as they are and nurtures them to be more of who they are truly wants them to be that now on the flip side the empress can be very enabling because of that but that's not the type of energy we're talking about here okay and so with that said there is a strong level of reshaping your sense of nurturance that may have been happening for you over over this time and for that point i direct you to the fourth house for you which is where uranus um, from mid to late august up until mid january has been transiting retrograde through Aries. Aries is the sign of our sense of self, our identity, who we are. And as you can see here, Aries rules the first house, right? And you do have this Sun-Saturn conjunction that's coming up this month in your first house, helping you to really change your shape of self or your sense of self, reshape your sense of self. But as Uranus was moving retrograde through the fourth house, this was kind of pulling you back and asking you to nurture yourself in a, in a, in a loving way or a better way or a new way. And then with all of this 12th house energy for you, it's also asking you to rework how you nurture the collective or the people around you. Okay, so now that Uranus is direct, you have an opportunity to put that in place. And this this conjunction between the Sun and Saturn, your ruling planet in your sign, Capricorn, in your first house, right? 
This is all about setting up a checkpoint for you in which Saturn says to you, okay, what have you learned? How have you reshaped your identity? Or at the very least, how can you reshape your identity? Please understand that this conjunction between the sun and Saturn is not happening with the with the prerequisite that you have to already be in that alignment for you to move forward. No. The prerequisite here is you having understood on a deep level what it is that needs to change for you. And once the Sun and Saturn come conjunct, if you really want to be able to move forward, you have at least got to have a game plan. Okay, you at least have to have an understanding of how it is you can move forward and then a willingness to put that plan into place. Okay, what does Saturn have to say for you right now? Hold on, let me switch the scene here. Switch the scene. What does Saturn want to say to Capricorn right now? How can Capricorn move through this easily? Okay, all right, okay. How, mm. How can Capricorn move through this? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Capricorn. Beautiful. So how can, what does Saturn have to say to you? How can you move forward through this checkpoint effectively or efficiently? Uh, ooh, what I want to say is on the right terms with Saturn. Okay. Overall energy here is the seven of pentacles to the six of cups to the king of pentacles to the hermit. Uh, the king of pentacles is de definitely representing you. But what I'm feeling here, Capricorn, is that it's representing you in a really solid and stubborn state. The King of Pentacles for you is, is representing that energy of bypassing spirituality or the realm of spirit altogether and just sticking to the mundane, sticking to what you know is true, which in this case would, would, would what, which, that which would be, excuse me, factually proven through the laws of physicality, right? Uh, but you have the first card in this overall energy is the seven of pentacles followed by the six of cups and the overall energy that saturn is bringing forward to you in this message is that you need to have an understanding of unconditional love and grace the six of cups is an energy of balance between give and take and where you may have been super focused on the balance of give and take in the physical realm, which technically would be represented by the six of pentacles. Instead, you are being asked, how can you be balanced on your give and take emotionally? Which then brings you to the king of pentacles. And with the king of pentacles, this is where I feel the flood coming. Maybe that should be your title. Because what I'm getting here, Capricorn, with this king of pentacles and the six of cups, I'm literally seeing and feeling water entering into your field and you're panicking because you were like the last time i let this happen i drowned or i almost drowned but you need to understand that if there is water being released into your sense of self into your reality it's desperately needed because i'm seeing that it's flooding a desert and Yes, there are life forms that can grow in the desert, but if you want to have a lush, beautiful green garden or green environment, you got to get some water in there, right? Allow the water to flow. Allow the water to flow in and, and teach you for yourself. Show you the real, real you. Show you who you truly are on a spiritual sense, on a deep, deep level, the hermit, okay? Now, what has officially come out here on the table, that was just your overall energy in terms of how to effectively move forward through this checkpoint with Saturn. What's officially come out for you here is the Eight of Wands. And it's funny because when, when I was saying, how can Capricorn move fluidly or efficiently through this situation, immediately the Eight of Wands came out. So what's going to clear your path? Because the Eight of Wands is all about having a clear trajectory forward, being able to see your target, to hone in on your target and to aim and to hit that target. And I don't mean just hitting the target. I mean bullseye, right? The Eight of Wands definitely represents uh, Archer, the, the Archer energy, which is related to Sagittarius, where Venus had been doing her retrograde motion in your second house, by the way. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, 
Oh no, I'm sorry. Venus was, that all happened in your 12th house, but also Venus is related to uh, the second house because Venus rules Taurus, Taurus rules the second house. Venus is all about your values, reshaping your values, reshaping your alignment to values, at least when Venus is retrograde, also reshaping your alignment to interpersonal relationships. And I do feel like there has been a big change in your alignment with values. And this, with all of this Piscean 12th house energy influence for you, it's been kind of getting you to understand the deeper elements of life. Again, there's more to life than just a physical transaction, right? Okay, back here, Eight of Wands. What's gonna help you, Capricorn, to uh, open up the flood? Ooh, 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 okay, open up the floodgates or like clear the path ahead. Here you are. Capricorn, the devil, to the Ace of Cups. Allowing yourself to be loved for who you truly are, flaws and all. There is a humongous amount of self-love energy coming through with this Ace of Cups and the devil. What I'm also hearing for you, Capricorn, again, the devil represents you here. So like, I, I'm not gonna sit here and try and demonize you and call you the devil. Like, nah, dude, we, we, ain't going, we, we ain't about to do that, all right? But what I am feeling here is that you have got to release your attachments to the mundane. That doesn't mean that you're gonna completely become like this, like, and I don't mean this derogatory, in a derogatory term, but this is the image or the phrase that I got in my head. So I guess this is what's gonna resonate with you the most. It doesn't mean you have to turn into a tree hugging hippie. Okay, a non-showering, like non-deodorant wearing, blah, blah, blah. Like no disrespect, you guys, because y'all know that's not me, but that's gonna connect with somebody, okay? It doesn't mean that you have to turn into that, but you do have to allow yourself to settle into the awareness that there's more to life than just the physical representation. And for those of you that are struggling the most with that, I understand, especially if you've been deeply hurt, damaged, um, um, vilified, demonized, what excommunicated, murdered, burned at the stake, tarred and feathered, stoned. I, I mean, yeah, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of barbaric shit in terms of that. So if you've been persecuted in the past on behalf of some sort of religious energies, religious zealotism or anything like that, you need to understand that that is not a true definition or not a true representation of the divine, of God's source creator. It's not. Of spirituality, it's not. It's a perversion. And you don't have to be in alignment with that. But what is necessary for your soul's growth, Capricorn, is for you to at least be willing to, to experience the waters of spirit. That's it. And you don't have to make any major, wild, crazy changes to your life overnight, or maybe even in this lifetime, okay? Your soul is eternal. This lifetime that you find yourself focused, consciously focused in, manifested within right now, is one among infinite, an infinite amount of lifetimes. So no, it doesn't have to happen overnight. It doesn't have to happen today. It doesn't have to happen tomorrow. It doesn't even have to happen by next year, 10 years, 20 years from now. It could happen in another lifetime. You have all of the time in eternity to get this done. And yes, that is an element of the unconditional love of the divine, of the Empress energy. I know I'm holding the Ace of Cups here, but this is also the type of energy that that represents. The divine spirit, God source creator, loves you just as you are and loves you so much that they're willing to give you an overabundance of time to achieve what it is you are here to achieve. An overabundance, honey, you can't get it wrong and you are not on a timer, okay? So as these, as these waters are seeping into your existence here, just allow it to happen, go with the flow, don't freak out. It's not going to be too much at once. You are not going to be drowned. Here's another thing, Capricorn. True spiritual beings, true higher exalted beings that wish to help us in our ascension throughout the cosmos will never throw you in the deep end and leave you to drown. Never. The divine will never flood you so much that you lose your sense of self. Never. If you are or ever have been experiencing that, 
then those are individuals or energies that wish to control you, that wish to deplete you, and that wish to make you their puppet. The divine God source creator spirit would never force something on you unless your soul was calling for it and you were actively resisting. Never. That is not how spirit works. Okay, so please keep that in mind. If you feel like or if you have evidence or you know that there are individuals or spiritual energies that are coming at you trying to flood you so that like trying to literally trying to drown you with their information or their way of being or their understanding, trying to literally force you into submission, that is not the type of energy you need to be paying attention to. Run and run fast and far because those energies are not trying to help you, okay? The divine would never do that to you. Excellent. Closing messages for you, Capricorn Rising, from the Oracle, um, the Magic of the Unicorn Oracle. Excuse me. Five shuffles here. One, two, three. Four, and five. Okay. Closing messages for my Capricorn Risings, please. Ooh. Shit, yeah. All right. For overall energy here for you, Capricorn, is card number 31, which does boil down to a four which is a balanced, harmonious, solid, and um, foundational energy. You have Cosmic Emerald. Create perfect health. Access divine abundance. And yes, that perfect health does come when you, it comes. It is necessary for you to incorporate your own sense of spiritual awareness. Even if it's just you trying to figure out who you are in this big soup of the cosmos, that's it. Your health is not complete until your emotions and your spiritual sense of self are incorporated into the balance. Four of them, physical and mental, which you probably have a really good grasp on, an excellent grasp on, probably because you've been focusing so, he so heavily on it. Okay, that's natural, makes sense. Emotional mm -hmm. and spiritual, the number four. Obviously, this is 31, but do the math. Three plus one equals four, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you have three more energies here. Oh, yes. Okay, another four. But this time, it's the, in the form of the master number, which is 44. I am presence. Now, also, the number 44 is directly attributed to or re directly relates to the angels, specifically the archangels, okay? So take that as it resonates. If you want to start doing some research, research and tap into the messages or the energy of the archangels, I encourage you to do so because, honey, they are standing on the, in the background waited with, waiting with bated breath to help you. But here's another example. There is a such, such a thing as the law of free will. So a divine being, in this case, we'll say the archangels, would never, and I repeat, never, because the law forbids them from doing it, but they would never inject themselves into your life to provide you with assistance. They can and only will when you ask for it. So that right there is a big sign. If there are if there are spiritual energies, and keep in mind, Capricorn, that spirit doesn't all spiritual energies don't always mean good energies, right? There are there are positive spiritual energies and there are negative spiritual energies. But it's the negative spiritual energies that inject themselves into you, that work to remove your sense of free will. If you are experiencing any of that energy, Capricorn, run and run fast and far because those are not the divine energies you want to be working with. Those are not energies that are in alignment with light, with the light, okay? Card number 44, I am presence. Expand your stellar gateway. I am that I am. 
That right there is a nod to the 12th house. It is what it is, baby boo. I am who I am. God source creator made me this way with this divine alignment for a specific reason, and I'm going to live it. The universe, the angels support you in that. Oh, wow. Actually, you have four. You have four cards here. The number four, tap into those angels, man. They're sitting there, standing there, patiently waiting for you to let them in. But you have got to ask them first. And I'm only, I'm, I'm only saying it that way, Capricorn, because I really want to make the point clear. There's no hate. There's no animosity. You're not being, we're not trying to yell at you. We're not trying to tell you you're wrong. You just need to understand that the only way these spiritual energies are going to be able to gain access to your life to help you move forward is if and when you ask for it. Okay. Just like all these, 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 um, these imposter accounts going on in the spiritual, in the, the, the tarot community over on Instagram. Don't believe that shit. The real ones here, like myself and many others that are out here, would never, either number one, we don't do personal readings, or number two, if we do do personal readings, you need to come to us. We're not gonna come to you and say, hey, I feel like you need a reading. No, it does not that work that way. That is not in divine alignment, okay? <laughs> Card number 37, spiritual warrior. Show you are a wise leader. Command the universe. But Capricorn, if you're really going to command the universe, you have to be in touch with the spiritual side of it, the energetic side of it. There's more to our existence than just the physical, the mundane, the transactional, the three, well, the physical transactions, the three dimensional, right? The, three, the third dimension that we find ourselves incarnated in, incarnated, you know, I did just want to say incarcerated in. Take it as it resonates. <laughs> but incarnated in, it's just one part of the whole, the vastness, the infinite that is the universe. Okay. Next, you have card number 16, soul healing. Align with your essence. See your true colors. Again, a nod to the 12th house. And then finally, you have card number 15. Look for the pot of gold, accept joy. I'm gonna leave that open up, open to interpretation because it's not for me to define what joy is for you. But what I will say is, when you allow yourself to tap into the truth of the spirituality that is you, that's when you can really find joy. Yeah? You have to have the waters. You have to. You can't live in a desert your whole life. You have to. If you're going to have a balanced experience here on this earth, you have got to incorporate all that the earth is. And that includes water. That includes emotion. That includes spirit. This is one of the things that has always boggled my mind when it comes to science and scientists. Like, I love science. I'm all for it. I was a huge biology and chemistry kid when I was in school. But I never understood why spirituality was always removed from the situation. I mean, yes, we don't have the technology to really observe and measure spirit yet. But if it weren't for spirit to begin with, then there would be no science to study, to practice. Like that's always, that's always boggled my mind. Take it as it resonates. Let that marinate. I'm going to leave it there though. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to pause for a moment, recollect myself, regroup, and then we're going to get into the non-denominational side of this reading. Yeah. Stay tuned. Hey Capricorn. All right, guys. So welcome to the second half of this reading. Yes, this is the non-denominational half. So regardless as to whether you practice sidereal astrology, tropical astrology, Vedic astrology, Chinese astrology, it don't matter. I, I shouldn't even, I don't even need to put Chinese astrology in there because it's a completely different system. But anyway, it doesn't matter. If you're here for a reading for, or messages for the sign of Capricorn for the month of February of 2022, generally speaking, this is for you. With that said, keep in mind that this is a general reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Any placement you like, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, Saturn, I don't care, okay? Whatever it is you're curious about, even if you're a cross watcher, keep in mind, this is for you. Yes? Alrighty, kids, we're gonna get into this here. Um, I'm gonna give this five shuffles and we're, we're gonna start with the tarot and we're gonna see what messages we have for the sign, the collective sign of Capricorn for the month of February 22, 2022, yes? 
Why not just say February 22? Okay, word. <laughs> Here we go. This is one. Two. For Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Beyond, this is three. February of 2022, please spirit. And this is four. Well, yes, that's four. But this is five. Here we go. All right, Capricorn. Let's see what we got for you. Okay, here we go. Capricorn. What messages do we have for Capricorn for February of 2022? Okay, first card that came out for you, Capricorn, is the Nine of Cups. And with this, I heard Comfort Zone. Now, uh, there's a big spiritual shift that's happening for Capricorn right now. At least that's the message that I'm channeling for this part of the collective. If you didn't watch the first half of the reading, you might want to. Uh, the Capricorn rising sign because e side because even though you're not you may not be a Capricorn rising that could still resonate for you at least just in in what it is we're talking about energetically. Uh, but what I'm hearing specifically for you Capricorn is a spiritual comfort zone. Um, being very content in your ways all I'm hearing also very stuck in your ways. But then the next card that came out here for you is the Five of Pentacles which literally said to me, spiritual poverty. And that's funny because that's kind of what this card represents. Not that it's funny, but what's ironic about it, I guess we could say, is that the, the thing about this card is these people are right outside a church. And yet they're hobbling around in the cold when they could literally just go inside the church and be warm. And here, the church doesn't necessarily mean religion. There's a lot of 12th house activation, activational energies that are coming through for Capricorn, specifically Capricorn rising, but I still feel like that's the general theme for your collective right now. Um, and it's like spirit, spirit is literally asking you to come out of the cold. You don't have to be excommunicated, feel, you don't have to feel excommunicated like this. Whereas certain religious groups or certain societal groups, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, may have excommunicated with you, God Source Creator would never do a thing like that. God Source Creator would never reject you, no matter what mistakes you... I mean, shit, you could commit, you could commit murder, and I'm being straight up and down with you. You could go out there being a mass murderer, and God would never reject you. We're not gonna we're not gonna get into that theory just leave it like that and if that triggers you if that sends you off if i just lost you because of that first of all you're probably not even watching this part but second of all i'm sorry to hear that but there's something there that you need to digest um some of you capricorns may be facing a religious zealotism situation that actually left you very very damaged whether that be in past lives or in this current life but past experiences and thus what i heard heard is you excommunicated yourself because you because if you really experienced something like that whether it was physical damage emotional damage and then also ultimately spiritual damage regardless as to what it was mental damage, whatever, you excommunicated yourself in some cases because you were like, well, shit, if this is God is gonna is how God is going to treat me, then I want nothing to do with that. And you would be right. But the, the thing about that is Capricorn, God would never treat you that way. Those are false representations. So now spirit is asking you to come out of the cold, to allow yourself to release yourself from this comfort zone and to come inside where you belong i'm gonna cry where it's warm where you where you are unconditionally loved oh guys i really might cry 
You don't have to be out in the cold like this. Love is being extended to you here. The Knight of Cups. Unconditional love is being extended to you here. And here you are as the Five of Swords saying, nah, fuck that. Get that shit away from me. And it is a, a, a detrimental energy, that's a detrimental fight. It's a lose-lose situation because not only do you, you effectively dis disconnect yourself from something that truly loves you unconditionally, but then that only helps you to harbor these feelings of fear, self-doubt, uh, 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 insufficiency, all of these things that are represented by the five of Kent pentacles by being left out in the cold like this. But the really, the real thing about this is that what's really self-sabotaging here, five of swords, is that you are actively leaving yourself out. When all, oh God, you guys, when all God source creator wants is for you to just come back inside. Everything will be okay. Just come back inside, please. You don't have to talk to those people anymore. You don't have to be associated with any of that energy that hurts you. Because that's not who I am in truth. Just please come back inside. At the bottom of the deck, overall energy though, which is good. What I feel like this is representing here for you is kind of like a past energy. This is kind of what you're coming out of. This is what you're working towards, coming out of this energy. And what symbolizes that is what's at the bottom of the deck, the Page of Swords. Underneath the Page of Swords, oh my God. You guys, I'm trying my best not to cry here. Um, but what's underneath the Page of Swords is the Empress. Uh, which makes sense because the Empress came out for the first half of this reading. And um, the Empress represents unconditional love. And what I'm, the image that I'm getting from this overall energy is of you being a wounded animal. We'll just say a dog, not to say that, that I'm calling you a dog, not to say that being associated with the principles of being a dog is really all that bad because dogs are some of the most God bless some of the most unconditionally loving and loyal creatures out there. So there's nothing wrong with being associated with a dog. Okay. But the image that I'm seeing is of a dog who has caught the attention of an unconditionally loving being that has been coming out here and consistently providing sustenance to this dog. This dog is not necessarily a stray. It might be, but it kind of feels like it's the type of dog that had a home once, but then was literally left out in the cold. And now is very distrustful of humans. But this Empress energy, which for you represents the universe, has been systematically and consistently showing you unconditional love. And now here you are sniffing around like, wait, Wait, what is this actually? Like, you're not running away at the sight of this Empress energy any longer. Because this Empress energy has consistently shown you that she is not a danger to you, but that doesn't mean that you're just gonna jump in and be like, okay, take me home. No, you're like, whoa, wait a second. All right, let me let me see. Let me sniff this out for a little bit. And you, you creep up, get a little sniff, and then you pull back, but you don't run away. She's showing you unconditional love. This is the divine. This is God's source creator trying to bring you back in because you deserve a home. And that home is here with me, says the Empress. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> Underneath the Empress is the Fool to the Ten of Swords, to the Three of Swords, to the Four of Wands. Capricorn, you are being presented with a way out of all of this pain an end to the heartbreak and solid, stable ground, spiritually speaking, for you to not only build on, but flourish within. Those of you that are, that have my OGs, it's not new for you to see me crying here, especially my Sagittarians. But like, I'm literally crying. 
I'm literally crying, Capricorn, because you don't deserve to be out in the cold like this. You don't. You deserve a home. You deserve a loving, nurturing environment. And the universe has, is hell-bent, is hell-bent on providing you one, providing you with one. Okay, I'm legit crying. <laughs> oh man, okay. Let's get some more. What other messages do we have? I'm gonna leave this there. I'm gonna leave this there. What other messages do we have for Capricorn for the month of February, please, Spirit? All right, that's enough right there. Eight of Swords. Yes, the Eight of Swords is your overall energy in this at this point right now. This is the mental prison, the confinement that you felt yourself to be in. However, with that said, this is a moment of you going through a bit of a jailbreak. Because with that is the Eight of Wands to the Hanged Man. So the opportunity you've had while you've been in this, we'll call it spiritual exile, because that's really kind of what this feels like. And that's what Spirit just said. You had a chance, you have a chance to gain an understanding of what true unconditional love, spirituality, God source creator energy is. And, and I will say, I will go so far as to say that, yes, this part of the path, this part of the journey was necessary because you had to experience the contrast. That's really a lot of what the three-dimensional world is about. Experiencing the contrast so we can come to find our own sense of center within that contrast and then grow and expand from there. So you needed to experience the contrast. And this may just be figurative, take it as it resonates, or maybe it's literal. But what I just heard was, you needed to experience that, that religious zealotism, the religious dogma, or maybe just the societal conditioning, societal dogma, right? This doesn't have to be about religion for you. It does have to, it does incorporate spirituality though. Anyway, you had to experience the zealotism or the dogma that puts you in this situation to begin with, right? And then you had to experience life within this position, Eight of Swords, in order for you to come to a healthy balance, in order for you to be able to say, I actually know what the truth is and what isn't, and I am not even going to entertain anything less than the truth. The Queen of Swords. Masculine, feminine, it doesn't matter. Man or woman, it doesn't matter. The Queen of Swords, no buts about it. I'm not like my counterpart, the king, who's gonna who's who's willing to sit here and listen to all your bullshit arguments. Nah, dude. Nah, dude. We ain't doing it. That's what the Queen of Swords represents. And that is what's going to free you, liberate you from this spiritual prison. Release you from this spiritual prison and put you into direct alignment with the truth of your soul. There you go. There's that There's that element of the balance of the contrast, the chariot. One white sphinx, one black sphinx. Those powers combined and balanced and harmonized in a sense of union help to leave you, drive you forward. Not even just lead you, drive you. Those two sphinxes, the dark and the light, combined and balanced in a healthy union is literally, or excuse me, are literally your engine. Okay. You know, Capricorn, I'm really sorry that happened to you. And I'm sorry you feel this way. But it does serve a purpose. And if you take advantage of this, if you take hold of this opportunity, you can find the wisdom and the enlightenment through all of it. I promise you, Capricorn, and I say this all the time, but I promise you, there is a method to the madness. Yes? 
unconditional love is the key. And that's all the universe is. Love, unconditional love, is the glue that holds everything in existence together. If it weren't for love, there would be no existence at all. You deserve to be a part of that. You deserve to have a slice of that pie. You gonna get Joe's, boo, says the queen, says the empress. You are going to get your slice. Let's close this out. I'm gonna get closing oracle guidance from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, yes? Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, closing oracle guidance for my Capricorn. Ah, for the Capricorn Collective. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, overall energy is card number 32, quieting the mind. And that's all about um, silencing the programming that keeps you in this state of spiritual poverty to begin with. Or excuse me, spiritual impoverishment. Five of pentacles, yes. Alrighty. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> First card out is card number tw uh, 29, Awakening Genius. And this to me represents the genius that is the universe, that is God's source creator, which you are a part of. You are literally a piece of this genius. You were made from it. You extend from it. You are it. And as a result of that Awakening Genius... We have card number 19, Waking the Lion. Now, the lion is Leo energy. Leo energy rules the fifth house. The fifth house is all about the house of personal expression. And that sense of being able to express yourself fully as you truly are, as the genius that is the universe created you to be, what influences your ability to be expressive in that way is what happens in the fourth house, which is your house of love and care and nurturance and family. So we're healing this. We're healing this sense of nurturance within you so that you can have be awakened as the lion, ready, ready to roar and express the truth of who you are because you are deeply connected with that sense of unconditional love and that sense of divine universal perfection that is the 12th house. Some of you are gonna become preachers. Some of you are gonna become teachers. Um, you might have a Sagittarian placement or at least Venus's retrograde motion through Sagittarius may have had a deeply powerful effect on you because what I'm also getting with this waking the lion energy is you step, stepping up, standing out and speaking some sort of truth, wanting to express some sort of truth, wanting to share that message, okay? But also just on a, just on a general scale, that lion energy feels just like a deep sense, a deep sense of inspiration and sense of self-love. That's also what ugh, Leos sometimes get the, uh, have or have been kind of given the reputation of being extremely self-centered and like selfish and whatnot. But it's really just because at its core, Leo energy loves itself, regardless of what anyone else says about it. Unconditionally, right? But I feel like I forgot where I was going with that. Other than the fact that I feel like some of you are gonna wanna express something fairly soon and I encourage you to do so, okay? Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I am available for private readings. If you would like one, please check the description box below uh, where I list 
some of the readings that I offer and my email address. I can either do a astrology reading for you or a tarot reading for you or a combination of both. Just let me know you're interested, shoot me an email, and I would be so happy to facilitate that for you. If you would like some extra monthly content with me, I highly recommend that you check us out, the family out over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below. And as always, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're new here and haven't done so already. With that said, I love you guys so unconditionally much. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yeah? Beautimus. Take care. Mm -hmm.